guys welcome back to my channel today's video is another weekly reading vlog i believe this is going to be um number 12 that i've done i've actually been staying pretty consistent with these uh weekly reading vlogs so if i don't do it one week then it's like two weeks combined but um i usually only do that if it's not that many books because i feel like posting a reading vlog for a week and it's only like two books it feels like it's not enough i feel like i need to at least have three books in if i'm gonna do so i feel like i need to at least read three books a week if i'm gonna do a reading vlog so if i don't post one week it's because i don't post a reading vlog one week it's because i didn't read uh, three books that week <laughs> and it's usually when it's like longer books but this week we're starting out with Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Morano Garcia. This book just sounded good. It was, uh, sounded like it has all the 90s vibes to it. Here I'll read what it's about. So it says Montserrat has always been overlooked. She's a talented sound editor, but she's left out of the boys club running the film industry in the 90s. Mexico City in the 90s Mexico City and she's all but invisible to her best friend Tristan a charming and faded soap opera star though she's been in love with him since childhood then Tristan discovers that his new neighbor is the cult horror editor Abel Reda and the legendary auditor Artur claims that he can change their lives even if his tale of a Nazi occultist imbuing magic into highly volatile silver nitrate stock sounds like sheer fantasy. The magic film was never finished, which is why Arita swears his career vanished overnight. He's cursed. Now the director wants Montserrat and Tristan to help him shoot the missing scene and lift the curse, but Montserrat soon notices a dark presence following her and Tristan begins seeing the ghost of his ex-girlfriend. As they work together to unravel the mystery of the film and the obscure occultists who once roamed the city, Montserrat and Tristan may find that sorcerers and magic are not only the stuff of movies. Says in Silver Nitrate, Silvio Morano Garcia conjures a tale of movie magic and supernatural suspense. So... I just love the idea that it takes place in like the 90s and it has to do with filming and shooting like a movie or whatever. It sounds like it's going to be really good. And it's not like really that thick of a book. I'm surprised. I mean, <laughs> I'm just surprised that it's not that thick. So I think this probably won't take me. If, I mean, if it's a good book and I really like the writing, it shouldn't take me too long to get through it. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to start reading this. I probably, it's um 1 13 now on saturday i might i'm taking a little because i just finished my last book y'all would have seen that in my previous reading vlog i just finished my last book so i'm gonna take this time to just relax a little i'm still sick as as i'm filming this i'm still sick because i'm filming this the same time same day that i end up my last reading vlog so I'm still sick, my throat's sore, my nose is stuffed up, my sinuses hurt so bad, my eyes hurt. <sighs> so I'm taking a little break from reading, but I'll probably start reading this a little bit, a little bit later today. So I will come in and give any updates as I see fit. If there's anything that just a downright spooks me out, that's my favorite updates to give during thrillers, is when something that really grabs my attention. Um, spooks me. Now I might because now I have myself a tripod. I finally got a tripod for my camera. <laughs> so now that I have a tripod finally for my camera, I might start to film a little. If I know it's getting ready to be to spooky part, I might film a little of just me reading the book because I've seen other people do that in their reading vlogs, especially if they're doing parts that they think is going to really shock them or something. So you can see like real time reactions. So I might try to do that some this week. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go now. And you'll see me back for either any updates or my thoughts on the book. Bye, guys.
Hi guys, so I'm giving an update because I end up DNF in this book on chapter five. Uh, you can see I put a little, God forbid, I'm glad this ain't my book, but I dog-eared it because I couldn't find another bookmark just in case I want to go back to it. I just wasn't, I don't know, something about it just wasn't grabbing me and I wasn't like, when I wasn't reading it, I wasn't thinking about, oh, I want to read it. And it wasn't sucking me in from the beginning. I'm on chapter 5 already, which is and on page 58. And it's still not grabbing me. I might go back to it. I still have time before it's due at the library. But I took, like, a little temporary, I guess, DNF from that one. And end up switching over to... A cute little rom-com called Last Chance Books. It is a YA novel. And it's about these rival bookstores. Clearly a girl owns one and plants the other here. Ow. Oh, no. I'll read you the little synopsis. So I'll read you the little synopsis inside of here. It says that, um, don't you just love the smell of old books in the morning? <laughs> So it says, Madeline Moore does. Books and Moore, the musty bookstore her family has owned for generations, is where she feels most herself. Nothing is going to stop her from coming back after college to take over the store from her beloved aunt. It's her destiny. Well, it was, that is, until Prologue, a prologue, opens across the street from B&M, a chain bookstore on their block. Madeline will not take that line down, even if her dysfunctional family is insisting on ignoring the imminent threat. Madeline attempts to set her destroyed prologue plans in motion, but Jasper, the guy who works there, seems intent on ruining her life. Not only is he taking her customers, he has the unbelievable audacity to be extremely cute. <laughs> But that doesn't matter. Jasper is the enemy, and he will be destroyed. After all, all is fair in love and book war. <laughs> that just sounds, and it is so cute, you guys. I'm already pretty, pretty far into the book. I'm on chapter, I'm on chapter 13, page 141. And I started this book yesterday. So <laughs> that tells you something about this book. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's so funny they're starting to play pranks on each other's bookstores now because they're pretty much practically across the street and they've already <laughs> madeline and jasper if they're if they're either one is called on their side of the street where their bookstore is then they have to go inside and buy a book from their store <laughs> they already have that set and the last time i went in there the last time, this last chapter I read, she was noticing that the bookstore, they weren't getting as many customers as they normally do in the mornings. And he had put caution tape over their doors. <laughs> like caution, the caution police tape that you put over doors. He put those over their doors so nobody was going in. <laughs> so she decided to sneak around into his, uh, into his bookstore and put, um flowers in his books for people to shop at <laughs> books and more so this has been pretty funny the banter they have going is hilarious you can tell that they like both like each other so this is kind of like enemies to lovers type thing and of course it all starts out because madeline's bookstore books and more is they're raising the rent on their lease that they have there and it looks like they're gonna have to close down because they're not making enough money from the little indie bookstore to keep it open so that's part of the thing too she's trying to save her bookstore so when she gets out of college she can come back and help run the place and of course he's the rival bookstore a chain not an indie bookstore like she is so it's just been, this has been a real delight to read. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this. It's been on like a nice fluffy read to have in the middle, in between um, um, 
thriller horror books that I've been reading. So it's been nice. I really, really enjoy this. But I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. I just thought I would come in and let y'all know about that. That I had end up switching books and going with something else to read for now. And I might read another romance after this. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. But yeah. I'm going to go ahead and keep reading, and I'll come back with any updates that I might have. Hi, guys. I finished this book. It took me literally maybe two days to finish it. I absolutely loved it. It was so good. I am going to give it four stars because, I mean, it says it's a YA, but I don't... <laughs> I wouldn't consider this a YA book, honestly. It was a lot, like, a lot of cussing and bad words in it. And, like, a lot. And there was some, like, sexual stuff in it. Not anything, like, smutty smut. But there was a little bit of sexual stuff in it. But this is such a cute little story. Um, more than being a romance book, it was about this girl, Madeline, her family owns a little indie bookstore, and she grew up there, so she was really attached to it. A lot of memories there, and just they're not making, they weren't making enough money to keep the doors open. So the book's pretty much about her trying to um, save the bookstore, and in the process, the rival bookstore um, across the street, Prologue. Jasper is the guy who uh, she they end up getting into like these prank wars over each other because she thinks that he's he's trying to sabotage their bookstore and put them out of business because they opened up across the street from them and um that's what she thinks and then he thinks during the whole pranks that they're just flirting and having a good time he really likes her and he's liked her since the first moment he went into the bookstore so it's pretty much them pranking each other throughout the whole book there's a lot of hilarious moments i really really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it i would definitely recommend it but i definitely don't feel like it's a ya novel I definitely feel like it should be for somebody who's 16 plus, I would say. Just there's a lot of cussing and there is some sexual things in it, but no actual sex stuff. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to have to check out more books from this author because I really did like her writing. Kelsey Rodkey, I liked her writing. So I might have to look at other books that she does because I really enjoyed the writing here. It kept me sucked in. And I just love the fact that it was about a bookstore and books. So I love that about it. But yep. So now that we're finished with that book, we're going to be moving on to this one, The Guest Room by Tasha so Silva. Tasha Silva. This looks like it's going to be a really good book. I'm so excited to read this. This is supposed to be a thriller. Hopefully, it's thrilling. <laughs> like the last book that I was trying to read. But, it says, here on the inside cover, it says, Who is watching whom? Tess has a bad habit. She can't stop snooping through her guest belongings. Following the mysterious death of her sister, Rosie, Tess is forced to rent out the newly vacant room to pay the bills. But with each guest who occupies the room, the urge to rummage through their belongings overtakes her every thought. Teasing herself with forbidden glimpses into the lives of strangers is a momentary thrill, and a risky one at that. But it's the closest she's felt to anyone since Rosie's death, when her newest lodger, the handsome and inscrutable Aron, takes the room. Tess soon discovers his saliciously detailed diary buried in his suitcase. The entries chronicle an infatuation with a beautiful stranger, which appears harmless at first, but as Tess delves further into his secret writing, a darker, more menacing tone emerges from each page. Drawn to danger and compelled to discover the truth, Tess shadows on through the streets of London, hoping to catch a glimpse of this unnamed woman. 
As she continues to pursue his diary, she can't help but notice the similarities between the woman described in the entries and herself. So this sounds uh, really, really good. And there's like this little quote here on the beginning of the book and it says, what you seek is seeking you. <laughs> so it's just sounds like a really, really fun, fun book. I cannot wait to read this. I hope it's more thrilling than the last thriller that I was trying to read. But I'm going to go ahead and start reading this. And if there's any like thrilling moments that I need to update you with, I will. But how creepy does the front of this book look too? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Hi guys. Well, look at me. I look like a little angel baby with the sun shining on me. <laughs> but I'm here to update you about the guest room. This book is so good. And this is like the next day. I had to make myself go to bed last night. It was one o'clock in the morning and I wanted to keep reading. <laughs> So that's how good this book is. I'm right now currently on. I'm on chapter 19, page 140 on the guest room. And I just, I'm, I'm loving this book. She is like going through this dude's stuff, reading his um, uh, journal or whatever, his diary she calls it but he keeps on placing it like in different places around his room like when she first found it it was in his book bag and then when she found it again it was in his like nightstand drawer and then when she found it another time it was hidden under his bed it makes me wonder if he kind of knows that she's going through his things and reading the journal <laughs> but she keeps on thinking that it seems like times that it's it's her that he's writing about but she's not sure at the same time they're kind of like one and the same like he's kind of stalking her but she's kind of stalking him too by reading his journal entries and everything but it is just it's so very interesting but she almost has like her other own little stalker there's this uh guy that lives below her his name's luke and he's like always knocking on her door and being up in her business and stuff and she kind of doesn't want him there <laughs> so this has just been a very very interesting um it's definitely pulled me in it definitely keeps me reading because i definitely need to know like what's he gonna write about next what's she gonna um remember next because there's some journal entries where he's talking about following her and she remembers that it's like weeks ago when she was um at these places so, I don't know. I'm really liking it. So, we'll have to see. Because when I'm not reading it, I'm thinking about reading it. So, this is this is five-star contender for me right now. But, yes. And there's, like, little parts. Let me see if I can find one here. There's parts where it's, like, him talking. And there was another book I read that had that, too. Where it was, like, the killer was talking in some parts. It's not often, but there's every once in a while, it's like from his, oh, here it is. So there's parts like this where it's like the stalker, it's written in different writing and it's like the stalker is talking. So it's not like your traditional thriller, I would say. It's more of like a stalker. Maybe somebody's stalking you <laughs> type of thriller, but at the same time, she's almost like kind of attracted to him because he's living in her um, room, her B&B, &B, she calls it, and he's like the one that's staying there the longest. He's supposed to be staying for four weeks. At this point, it's been like a week or a week and a half where I'm reading it, and now she's talking about how at the beginning she felt like four weeks was so long, and now that she's reading his diary and she's getting more and more curious about him, four weeks doesn't seem long enough to her to get to really know him and everything, but yeah, I'm going to keep reading, and um, I'll maybe I'll throw in another update. If not, then I'll be back for when I'm done the book so I can really give you my full opinion and thoughts of the book hi guys so i'm on chapter 19 or reading it now and she comes home and he's sitting on the couch in the living room writing in his diary that she's been 
secretly reading when he's not around. And she's, like, doing everything she can in the kitchen to try to stay around him and him writing in the diary. She's even making some porridge, she says, because this is in the UK. So, clearly, they make porridge instead of oatmeal. Or, it's different from oatmeal anyways. But, he ends up getting up. <laughs> she, she uh, hears the, the scratching of the pencils stop from him writing. And she hears him sigh and get up, stretch and get up. He goes to the bathroom, shuts and locks the door. She hears the door lock. And she decides that it's just such a great time. He left his diary sitting on the coffee table. So she decides to tiptoe over there to read his diary. I almost feel like he's doing this on purpose. Like he's, he, maybe he knows she's reading it and that's why. I don't know. I feel like he's doing it on purpose. I don't, I don't know if he is, but why would he just, why would he be out in the open writing on it and then leave it there for her to find while he's in the bathroom? Because clearly when he leaves the bathroom, she's going to hear, because she's going to hear the lock turn when he goes to open the door or she'll hear the water running as he's washing his hands. So here she is tiptoeing over there. <laughs> Um, listening for any sounds and she's going to read what he just wrote. I'm just like, are you crazy? What if he comes out of the bathroom? What if you don't hear him? What if you get too sucked into what he's writing that you don't pay attention enough attention and you get caught? What would he do? You know, uh, <laughs> this book is so good. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to it because I want to read what this journal entry says and I'll give you any more updates as I go along. Okay, you can tell how much I like this book when I'm giving you an update after every chapter. So she was like walking alone in the park along the woods when all of a sudden she hears a girl screaming and it sounds like she's struggling. So she goes to rescue the girl, okay? Runs and butts the guy to knocks him towards the ground and she runs, she thanks her and runs away. And, um, <clears throat> it's like really late at night. I think midnight, one o'clock in the morning, late. And the guy says, calls her a bee. And, um, <laughs> says, what are you doing? And all this, and was going to come after her. But then he looks behind her. There's someone that was behind her that intimidated him that he ran away. And when she turns around to look, she sees, like, a light, like, from a phone lit up. And then it goes away so fast, and the person disappears. So, and then when she gets home, her hand's cut where she, uh, I guess fell or whatever. I forgot what she did to cut her hand. But her, she, her hand's cut, so she's at the sink trying to clean her wound. And uh, not long after that, in walks Aaron. At one o'clock in the morning, she says. So she says, was was he out until one o'clock in the morning? Is he just getting home? She's thinking all these things. And then he's worried. He comes up to her and is like, what'd you do? What happened? And everything. What happened to your hand? And she told him that she was just clumsy, that she fell on a piece of metal that was, like, broken or whatever. But she says that she can tell that he doesn't believe her. And he tells her to stay there, and he goes and gets the first aid kit and proceeds to take care of her and acts like he knows something. And she says, you, you seem like you know what you're doing. And he said that he had taken a first aid class, so he knows about first aid. Well, there's like this moment between them, like an attraction between them, like they were going to kiss until he breaks it. And he says, well, we should go to bed and tells her good night and says, hasta mañana. And everything and now it's at the part where I was telling you where it's talking from the stalkers perspective and I want to read this to you because it's, it's so freaking creepy I haven't read it all I've only read the very beginning but here it says she is so lovely especially when asleep curled into herself hair splayed around her head she dozes off with the light on sometimes making it easy to see I can stand there looking at her, perfectly still, except for the breath in her chest. Both of us make mistakes, it appears. We are not perfect. She doesn't look good in the morning, which gives me a shot of satisfaction. She is flawed down deep. She has done bad things. 
I like a bit of fight in a girl, you know? This is in Spanish. Una, una lanchadora con potencial. I'm butchering Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Which I shouldn't be by now because I'm married. My husband's a Latino. <laughs> but I'm still not good at it. This is, that's probably wrong. One of those, on, <laughs> one of those crappy online translations. I don't know. I don't speak the language, do I? Something I might have to remedy. And that is all that it says. But it seems like. It's definitely Aaron, and it's definitely, like, seeming like he's going in there and watching her while she's sleeping, so. So, this might be a little bit of a longer vlog, reading vlog this week, especially since this book is so good, and I'm feeling the need to give you so many updates on it. It's something about these creepy books, but they're having, like, this attraction, like, they're attracted to each other. And even I'm like, oh, like, in the moment, like, when he was taking care of her hand, he seemed so sweet and was just being so careful cleaning her hand and it makes me like the idea of them two together so there's kind of like a little bit of romance going on there between them but i'm waiting to see where this goes so i'm gonna go back to reading and i'll come back with any updates if i have any so i'm coming back so soon because i just remembered i never told you tess which is i don't even think i ever really said her name her name's tess the one who's subletting the the uh, bedroom to people but I didn't never mention that it was her sister used to live in that bedroom and she died at least I'm pretty sure yeah they found her dead in the park and there's still they don't know who did it there's still an investigation going on so Tess is trying to figure out who did it she thinks it's her her uh, ex-boyfriend Oliver that's who she thinks did it but she keeps going to the same spot where they found her sister's body in the park. That's usually where she is at night. And I think she's hoping that somebody will follow her, that the killer will come after her. I, I think that's her hopes when she goes there so she can figure out who killed her sister. Because that's what she's ultimately trying to do right now. So anything she remembers, she's telling the detective on the call in the detective and telling him on the case about all of it. So, that's another thing. I feel like Aaron could, the one that she's subletting the place to, what if he's her sister's killer? What if he's a star? And what if it's Luke? You know? Because <laughs> he's, honestly, Aaron, even though he's, like, stalking and doing all this, he doesn't seem threatening. And even though Luke is, like... Not technically stalking her. It seems like he is. Because he's there almost every day. And talking to her almost every day. And his and she gets more of a vibe from him. Like a weird vibe from him it seems like. But he told her. Luke. The guy from downstairs. He told her. The first time he met Aaron. That he got a weird vibe from him. And she he thinks there's something off about him. But I don't know. I feel like there's something off about Luke. So, part of me thinks that maybe Luke could be the one that's the stalker, the one who killed his sister, her sister, I don't know. But I'm going to go back to reading. I just just reading this part where she was uh, accusing Oliver once again of killing his sister. So, <laughs> so I thought, oh, I should probably include that so y'all know that part of the story too. So let me get back to reading. <laughs> Hi, guys. So I'm here to update you on my vlog. I am now finished the guest book. This took me a day and a half, maybe two days, maybe two days to read. Okay, oh, that's better. So <laughs> I have my phone flipped the opposite way, but I had just finished the guest book yesterday. This book was so, so good. It is like I was telling you about it earlier about the book you find out who Rosie's killer was and it is not who I expected to be the twist was wow I was suspecting Luke her the guy who lived downstairs because he seemed a little creepy and I was expecting her B&B guest because I mean he was writing in his diary about 
somebody and it seemed like he had stalkery creepy vibes going about him but let me just tell you it's not who you expect it to be it was the twist really got me I was, it wasn't who I was expecting so I'm standing on my five star read for this book y'all definitely need to read this during spooky season it's not exactly like supernatural spooky that type of um a vibe but it's definitely good for fall season it gives you the fall vibes you definitely get the creeps out of some of this but i really really enjoyed it and i definitely recommend reading this picking this up and reading it for the fall season this is like the debut novel from tasha sylvia or silva but i'm gonna keep her on my watch list so i can read more books that she comes out with because so good i loved her writing it really grabbed me and sucked me in it's the same type of five star read for me where i start reading the book it sucks me in and then when i'm not reading it um i'm thinking about reading it and i'm thinking about what's going on in the book and i'm still thinking about some of the things that happened in this book so that's how i know that it's a solid five star read for me but i'm gonna try to start not blabbing on as long in my weekly reading vlogs because there i think i'm just doing these short little clips and it's not going to be that long and then i go to edit it and they're 40 50 an hour long <laughs> i'm i'm uh, giving this update to you as i was editing my two weeks of reading the thing it's a two weeks of reading because it's an hour and 10 minutes and i didn't really want to cut it down any more than that because i cut it down a lot <laughs> So it's going to be a long one, <laughs> but so I'm going to try to maybe give less details. Maybe I'm giving too many details in the books, but so the next book I decided to read is The Inheritance Games. I told y'all last week that I was going to be continuing the next week with more spooky vibe books and I am continuing on with more spooky mystery vibes. So this is a YA novel and everybody talks about this trilogy and there's actually a fourth book that's came out that's not part of the trilogy but it's within the same world as the trilogy the hawthorne games is the new one that came out but anyways i've been dying to read this I've, it's by the same people that write the natural series which i read the first book in the natural series and absolutely loved it and i'm still waiting for the second book on the natural series to become available in my library so i can read the second book but um in the meantime, I thought, why not start on this one, too? So, let's give you a little, read a little synopsis for you. It says, secret passages, elaborate riddles, billions at stake. Let the games begin. Avery Grams has a plan for a better future. Survive high school, win a scholarship, and get out. But her luck changes in an instant when billionaire Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. The only catch? Avery must move into his sprawling mansion full of secret passages, riddles, and codes. Unfortunately for Avery, Hawthorne House is also occupied by the family that Tobias Hawthorne just disinherited. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons, dangerous magnetic boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they would inherit billions. <clears throat> Heir apparent Grayson Hawthorne is convinced that Avery must be a con woman and he's determined to take her down. But his brother Jameson views her as their grandfather's last hurrah, a twisted riddle, a puzzle to be solved. Caught in a world of wealth and privilege with danger around every turn, Avery will have to play the game herself just to survive in this twisty, thrilling new mystery from beloved author Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So, I think it sounds just so amazing. I love um, riddles and twists and games and stuff like that. So, I'm, like, really excited to read this. I, I anticipate this to be another, like, five-star read for me. So, <laughs> we'll see. I haven't started reading it yet. Usually when I come in here, I've already started reading some of this. But I haven't yet because I wanted to update you before um, starting to read this. <laughs> and also because I've been taking time after reading these books to create like a cute little image for my Instagram. And to, 
to um review these on my instagram too so if you haven't check out my instagram the links down below in the description box and also you can check my uh link in the description box i have my good reads down there too so if you check that down there you'll be able to see more i update that more often on what I'm reading. So, if you were curious as to what I've been reading or what I've read, you can check out my Goodreads too. That's also in the description box down below in the links. But I want to go ahead and get started reading on this while I'm waiting for my uh, latest weekly reading vlog to finish exporting. And then I'll upload it to YouTube. That'll probably take most of the day because of how long the video is. But I'm going to start babbling. I have a problem with talking too much and making these way too long but i'm gonna go ahead and go and i'll come in with any updates i have on the book i'm sure i'll have some because it just sounds so good <laughs> hi guys i've been really bad about updating you this week during my reading vlog so it's already thursday i did finish this like a couple days ago <laughs> it didn't take me long to get through the inheritance games this was so good there was just so many twists and turns of puzzles that you had to figure out. I loved every second of that. I loved following along with the characters, figuring out the puzzles as they were going through. It was just so cool. So this is pretty much about Avery. And she's just your typical high school student. She doesn't really have a lot of money. In the end, she is living in her car. And then all of a sudden, she finds out that she's inherited billions of dollars from this... Hoth, Tobias Hawthorne that she doesn't even know. She doesn't remember the guy. She doesn't remember ever meeting him. But somehow she's inherited billions, his entire estate. And um, there's a catch, though. To keep the money, she has to live in the Hawthorne house for a year. Um, if she doesn't stay there for a year, then she forfeits the money and it goes to charity. But this pretty much just follows her along the way in the Hawthorne house. She's trying to figure out, like, why... This guy left her billions of dollars, and um, he leaves notes for each one of the... There's four Hawthorne brothers that he didn't leave money to. He left them some money, but he didn't leave, like, the whole estate to them. Just some money, and then he left letters in his will for each person. And then Avery's letter it just said, I'm sorry, and had his initials there. So it's pretty much going through. She's trying to figure out the puzzle and why he left the money. Why is he saying he's sorry in this letter and everything? So good. Five stars for me. I've already put the rest of the series, including the new book that just came out, on hold at my library. So I'm just waiting for it to come available. Um, it shouldn't take too long to get the two books after this one. But the Brothers Hawthorne one that just came out, it's I'm like number 30 on the holds. So it's probably going to be a while before I get that one. But very excited to finish off that series because I just, I have to figure out. You still haven't, at the end of this book, figured out exactly why he left her the money. I mean, you figure out why. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, So I started on... The Counselors. So this is more of a summer mystery, summer ween mystery book. I'm <laughs> close to being halfway through it. So this one, I'll read you the synopsis on it. It's pretty good. And I got this because it takes place at a summer camp. And I just love, I don't know, I've been loving this year reading books that take place at summer camps. And this one's like a mystery thriller when that takes place at summer camp so this is probably more of like a summer ween book versus the uh, october spooky season book but i already put it on hold and i cannot wait to read this so let's read the synopsis so you can see what the book's about it says camp alpine lake is the only place where goldie easton feels safe she always had a special connection to the place even before she was old enough to attend, the camp is the lifeline of Roxwood, the small town where she lives. Alpine Lake provides jobs, money, and prestige to the region, but few Roxwood locals get to reap the rewards of living so close to the glam summer camp. With its five-figure tuition and rich kids who have been sent there for eight weeks by their powerful parents, Goldie's one of them. Even with her towny background, Goldie has never felt more at home than she does at camp. And now she's back as a counselor. 
desperate for summer to start and her best friends, Ava and Imogen, to arrive because Goldie has a terrible, dark secret she's been keeping and she is more in need of their comfort than ever. But Goldie's not the only person in camp who's been lying. When a teen turns up dead in the lake one night, she knows that the death couldn't have been an accident. She also knows that Ava was at the lake that same night. What did Ava see and what does she know? Why hasn't she said anything to Goldie about the death? Worst, what did Ava do? But asking questions offers no answers, only broken bonds of lifelong friendship with hidden danger and betrayals deeper than Goldie ever imagined. So this is so, so good. I've already gotten to the part where they found the dead body in, um, <clears throat> in the lake. And yes, she had seen Ava leave the cabin and go towards that lake or whatever in the middle of the night because she couldn't sleep because she's still thinking about the tragedy that happened between her and her ex-boyfriend pretty much and wow this is really really good I've barely been enjoying this book I should be able to finish it by the time probably tomorrow I'll probably by tomorrow or tomorrow I'll probably finish it off but this has been really good. I really, really can't wait to find out because there's just so much going on here. Um, the person that turns up, I don't know if I should tell you. I'm not going to tell you who the person is that turns up. But you have to read this because so far it's been really, really good. Um, just her trying to figure out what happened. The last thing I read is she found, because they were, they were um, saying that his death was an accident. And he just drowned. They they found alcohol in his system when they when they did the autopsy. So they just thought that he was drunk when he got in the water and he drowned. And it was an accident. But then you see right here where it says that it was suspicious. It says um she found a newspaper when she was at the bar on her day off from counselors. It says suspicion lingers in Heller McConnell's death as family tries to move on. So. Heller McConnell is a guy, and he's the one that was found in the lake. And now they're, the newspaper's finally reporting that there's, like, some type of suspicious activity around his death. So, I've been really enjoying this. I'm going to keep reading it. And hopefully by tomorrow, I'll be coming back with the update that I've finished. If there's any updates in between, it's because I found out something that was, like, very shocking. <clears throat> but right now, I have no idea who it is. It could be Ava, one of her friends, but it could also be those two other guys that have, like, made remarks to her when she was at his funeral. One said he deserved it, and then there was another one. I forgot what he said, but there's two other, there's two guys that were technically friends with him. He was on the, I think, the football team, and they're on the football team, too. And one of them said that he knew what happened, and he deserved what he got. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> so there's, like, a, a couple suspects. But Ava's was, like, the next morning, it was, like, really early in the morning before they found the dead body. She came back into the into her cabin and crawled in bed with her and cuddled up with her and was crying and said, just know I love you. So she seems really suspicious doing that too. So I don't know. I don't know who it is. There's definitely three suspects and who could it be? <laughs> and if she's ever, I'm wondering if she's ever going to tell her secret to her friends because she has yet to tell them what she's been keeping from them. So it looks like lies. And keeping things from each other might tear the friendship apart, but we'll see. I'm going to keep reading. I think I've babbled on enough about the book, but I'm going to keep on reading. And then I'll come in with an update if I have one, or I'll come back with the conclusion. Because this is the last book I'm going to be reading this week. This week turned out to be like a mysteries week, reading mystery thrillers. I've really been loving them here lately. But, yep, I'm going to go ahead and go. And I'll come back if I have anything to update. So, I am back. I have finished this book. I'm actually sitting in front of the library right now. It's getting ready to open in 10 minutes so I can return this. And I have another book 
I have a couple other books that I've finished and I have one that I'm that I haven't returned yet that's due to be returned today but I did finish the counselors and this book was I just love the ending um I probably give it maybe three and a half stars it'll probably be three stars on my good read my good reads but um yeah I really really enjoyed it I just thought it was a little slow um, it was more of a slow burn mystery. It wasn't like a mystery thriller where you were constantly things were happening. You were just slowly learning about, um, <coughs> all the characters in the books and about the camp and, um, and it had like a now and then story time. So you would get to see what happened in the past and what's happening in the present and you just learn more about the characters you learn more about Goldie and Ava and Imogen throughout the years and their bond together and everything but um there is like a mystery going on in between but yeah I would give it a solid three stars I really did like it I thought it was pretty good um but yeah that's it for my um weekly vlog this week um it turned out to be a week full of mystery novels so i kind of like that next week will probably end up being a week full of uh, romance novels because i do have some romance novels that have been sitting on my library tbr for quite a while now that i need to read so i'm probably going to read those next <clears throat> as long as no books become due that can't be renewed <laughs> before the end of next week if that happens i'll let you guys know in the vlog if that happens but um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this week's reading vlog and um you'll have to let me know in the comments down below what did y'all read this week and um what your thoughts are on those books and um yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you're not yet subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. And next to the subscribe button is the bell. You can ring that to be notified of all my future uploads. And I hope you guys are having a great day, night, weekend, whenever it is you're watching this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.